Good afternoon, everyone. We'll be starting right now. So, and welcome to our Friday webinar. Today, we are looking at annotate, all things to do with labels, pictures, and dimensions, and symbols. For today's webinar, we'll be using Cabmaster Pro V11.1.0.121, which is the most current release version. And yes, annotate will have will have relevance to the release of Cabmaster 12. The questions we're going to be answering today are what are labels, text boxes, pictures, callouts, and leader lines? How do you change the settings of them and apply them? How to use dimensions, how to use auto dimension and what is dimension set? How to use tape measure, how to use radial and angular dimensions, how to use and add symbols, how to use trim and pa page versus world measurements and annotate in design. Now we're just gonna go through every, now we're not gonna go through every possible application, setting or use of annotate, but if there's something you would like to know and how to do, and we have time at the end, we will answer what questions you have. Please keep those questions to annotate. I'll now go through about the web, the interface itself. So in the interface, you can ask questions in the webinar advice by qu clicking on the Q&A and then typing your question here. I have Nick with me today to respond to your questions as we go. The three little dots will change the interface. You can leave the webinar at any time by clicking on the red phone at the bottom of the screen, but you'll be missing one of my favorite sections in Cabmaster, that of annotate. I'm gonna start off with what are labels, text boxes, pictures, callouts, and leader lines, and how do I change the settings to apply them? These are your actual annotations. This is where you can add text and pictures to your plans and jobs. They can be used to set up and change templates, and they are what is behind these slides we are shown showing that are generated in Cabmaster. So if you see actually all of the stuff on the screen here, this has all been designed in Annotate. These are text boxes. This is a picture. This is a picture that has been added to a template. These are labels. In the top tabs of Cabmaster, you will find a tab called Annotate. Here you will find labels, text boxes, pictures, callouts, leader lines. These are the annotations, as I said. I will go through each of these and how to place them and set up their settings. So the first one I'll come to is labels. Labels are where you can place a heading or text on the job. It can be used to label a kitchen or anywhere where you need to make a comment. Labels are placed by left clicking on the label itself, clicking, left clicking on the screen itself, and then typing whatever you like. I can right click on label. If you right click on the label, it will open it in the blue. So if I right click format label tool, you will see it will open up. So as you can see, the label tool has really just one section, which has a text area and this giant A. It also has bold, italics, underline, and where it's located. The giant A actually hides a sim an area which hides the font size, the font type, the size, what color you want it to be, if you type something in here in the blue, this will set this as a label going forward. So this will actually have it, when you next place it, if I was to write kitchen here, it will always come out in kitchen and it will be there the next time you use, you use this symbol. If you're actually wanting to change the writing of the one you've already got, I would recommend you click here, format item. And you get the same thing, except it's on the page in a gray format. Going forward, all right clicks will bring it to the blue if you click it up here. And all of the times you click it on the page will open it in the gray. If you change it in the blue, it will make a permanent change to your cab master going forward. So it will actually keep those settings 
for the next time you open Cap Master. If you open it in the grey, it won't. I'm going to come to text boxes. Text boxes are very much the same as labels, except you create a box or list of the text. You can alter the box and change its shape. So if I grab the text box, the how to put it down, you click on text box. I've taken my hand off the mouse. I now left click and drag. In, I can now start writing. This kitchen includes, and if I press the enter key, I can then type on the next line, or the next line, or the next line. So, if I right click on the text box and go format text box tool, I have the position to change its size and position, its style, which I can actually have it with different lines, different fill type, a different style, chamfering the sides, whether it's filled or empty. And I can then put in their text and I can edit the text and also change the font size of it. The same happens when I click the gray of it. except I can actually alter the writing. I'm now going to come to the call out tab. Actually, I'm going to come to the pictures. I'm going to go in the, the correct order. The picture tab is where we add images to drawings. Like 3D render, like the 3D render you have created, or the photo of the before work is done, or a picture of the finished cabinet, or any image you want to add. This is where you add it. Like the text box, pictures are created by left clicking on picture. Now I don't have anything in the blue set up, so when I drag it on, it's not going to show anything. But it is there. And I can show you this by lassoing it, right clicking on it. Now I can basically use this to bring up a picture by going format item. In here, I have a gray and a picture one. The gray lets me choose the size and the position. The picture lets me choose where to browse for a picture. So I could browse, it's going to start off in bitmaps normally, and I'm going to grab tongue and groove picture. As you can see, it puts this out. So if I go back to this, lock aspect ratio and close as you can see it's brought out the tongue and groove picture what the lock aspect ratio is it means when i manipulate it it won't warp it if i turn off the 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 lock aspect ratio you will see that i will be able to warp the image by its x dimension or its y dimension The same thing happens in blue, but if I set something in here, if I browse for something, that will be the, the image you will get all the time. I'm going to come to call out. The call out tab is where you can call out or make a part of the drawing bigger that we want to draw attention to. So call out feature is you have a bunch of cabinets. You click on call out. You highlight, you draw a square, and you ex and basically where you need it to be. So you draw a small square. Now, over here, where I've still got call out enabled, I now draw a bigger square. And as you can see, it extends and makes bigger. You can also, like the, like the others, right click on it and format the call out. In here, you have the ability to change its how it looks, whether it has an arrow at the start or end, the visibilities, the source location, and the destination location. With this, I can also do one other little trick at this point. I can grab this image and, weirdly enough, move it around. So I can use it as a kind of magnifying glass. I can also, while I'm right clicked, change the the source, the, the 
the zoom and the visibilities. So I can actually make this bigger. I can lock the aspect ratio and I can change the scale. And as you can see, with me changing the scale, it makes that bigger. I'm now going to come to leader lines, and this shall finish up the annotations. Last of the annotations is leader lines. This is where we can draw a line with arrows and even writing at the end. This is placed by left clicking on the leader line. All of these are, play, are done by left clicking. Then you left click anywhere on the page. And then, so you actually, I have done a drag while doing it. You can just left click on something, like there. I am on select. That's just testing you. So this thing will come up if you want to continue drawing on the last one. If you select no, I would be draw, continue drawing on the last leader line. If I go yes, I will start a new one. So I'm going to start there because there's three ways to move this. The first way I can drag, I can click. And if I hold down the shift key, it will draw them straight. Or I can go back to the insert and use the directions via the wall key. As you can see, there. Under the settings of the leader lines, if we go back to annotate, you have the blue, and in here, you have the ability to write text at the end. And the line, you can put arrows at the end or at the front. You can change the length of the arrow size, the height of the arrow size, and what the line size is. You can even change the line color. Moving right along, I will now come to the first of the dimensions. So the dimensions, the first one is what I like to call the manual dimension. It's just really dimension. The first dimension on the tab is the manual dimension. The tool shows the distance between two handles. Handles are on the cabinet and you can and you can also be markers. You will find how to change which handles is using under the view handles. So if I click to view, under the handles, you have a selection of handles. I'm not going to really go into all of these. I like to keep it on none because if you go to all sections, it makes the cabinet slot together hard, not as easily. And the none basically brings up the nine handles of a cabinet, which is all attached to the carcass and the middle point. So if I come back to annotate and go dimensions, and bear in mind, I can switch between the handles while doing the, in the midst of doing a dimension. But I'm just going to keep it simple. I will let you play around with it at a later point. To apply one, you click dimension, which I've done. You then left click on a handle. So if you can see, I've got this little diamond. That means that is the handle it wants me to click to. So let's say I want to get the handle to that, to these two cabinets. I'll scroll in so you can see. To there, I've taken my hand off the mouse. I move across to here so I can see another diamond. I take my hand off the mouse. So I've not got any button pressed. I'm now just moving without holding any buttons. I am now moving just the mouse up and down to move that dimension. I now click again and it will stay there. I can now expand it. Expand it. This is a hand, this is a marker that I've placed, and it's just here to show you that you can use it to other locations. And that is basically the very simple way of doing manual dimensioning. The settings for manual dimensions. I will actually briefly mention, you can also load up different styles of dimensions that have already been set. You can do this to every single one of them. The only thing that you cannot do it at the moment is any of the shapes besides the rectangle. In Cabmaster 12, one of the few 
one of the new variants things that is coming is the ability to do it to circles and other shapes. But I'm not really going to go into these. This is where you can save settings you have, save it in, and it will basically then you can load them back as a quick way to access it. But as you can see, under the dimension tool, you have the ability to change the, the light, the, the color, the background, the stems, what it comes out as, what color it comes out as. You can change arrows, you can change the label. Now this formula will appear. This formula indicates how many decimal places there is in Cabmaster in the actual number. And it will come a very apparent. I will come across the settings of annotate. And we'll talk about this formula. This formula is used for dimensions to set the decimal place. The number after the, the thing, after this percentage sign, after the full stop, is determines how many decimal places. If I was to change that to zero, you would have zero decimal places. And I'm going to show you that by going back to dimensions. In here, I'm going to select on this dimension here, format dimension, and I'm going to change this to a zero. Tab, close down, and as you can see, you now have no decimal places. You can have as many decimal places as you like. Oh, I don't think you want to go more than one or two, though. <laughs> It does round it up, but bear in mind, if you have no decimal places, it is rounding it up. Order dimension, if you, you have two options, tool and whole page. If I go whole page, you'll see what it will do. It will apply it on every single wall. That's not always useful because sometimes you might only want one wall. And I will come back to how auto dimension is set up. It is basic, it has got to do with the dimension set. I will come back to that in a moment. The next part I want to show you is actually how tool works. Auto dimension tool allows me, once I've clicked it, to select to left click a wall or a cabinet and just have that wall or cabinet side or any side I want it to go from. So it can be used to just get an one area that I want to auto dimension. Now auto dimension is unlike the other ones, is not really one that you right click on. As you can see, it doesn't really appear here any settings in. Its settings are controlled by dimension set. Dimension set, if I format this, controls what happens when auto dimension is engaged. So auto dimension set covers the base cabinets, the bench tops, the overall wall, the upper cabinets, and you can turn these off per each one. You can change the line style of it, how far the line is away from each other, and you can change for each individual cabinet type and bench top or wall. You can change the label that comes out with it, and you can filter parts of it. Moving on to tape measure. Tape measure is a lot like the dimensions, except for one difference. Tape measure is, is basically like manual dimension, but it, you click to handles, but it will not stay after you unclick. You can also use the measure outside of handles. So I'm going to click on tape measure. And if I click along like this, you can see that it's going it will tell me exactly how much it has three variables, an X, a Y, and an as a crow flies. 
And you use the tape measure by clicking, holding, dragging. And you can use it to, as you can see, to any location. It's useful when you're really trying to get a just a measurement that you're trying to get at that point. We're now going to come to what I like to call the dimensions that aren't used as much, which is radial dimension and angular dimension. So radial and angular dimension, the radial dimension works by giving the radius of a circle. So I put a circle here, I click on radius. I'm not really going to go too much into this one. And as you can see, I can get the radius. I much prefer the angular dimension. The angular dimension gives you the angle of any wall. So let's say you've created a wall or you need a wall at an angle and you want to show this to the client. You click on angular dimension. You'll see that it will have a red line come up on that side. You can click on it, click on it. And as you can see, it will tell you what that angle is at. You can also use it on the other side as well. You can get, and I did that to the inner wall, but as you can see, 225. I'm not going to go too much into these except to show them that they exist and that you can use them. I'm now going to come to how to use and add symbols and use trim. Symbols is where you can create symbols or pictures you might that you might use time to time. So these are actually used for able to be create things like a rectangle, a circle. You can use it to create polylines, which is just a line. And by holding the shift key, you can put them as a straight line. You can also use polygons, which is where you can create. Now, none of this is a machinable object. None of these will machine. They're just a symbol that has been, or not a symbol, but a measurement, a box that is just there to be used and to put down as a reference. I'm going to come to symbols. So symbols, you use select, highlight over something. In this case, I have created a very nerdy image that I want. And by lassoing it, I'm getting the whole image. I can then go create from selection. And as you can see, I now have the ability to have this as a symbol. So I can now use this symbol to place it anywhere I like. And if I save this symbol, this symbol will become a symbol that I can have going forwards. So I can save this in. I can also add pictures. If I expand that down, you will see that I have another picture and I can use this to create pictures. I'm now going to talk about trim and extent. This is only useful for these shapes. So the trim, I have drawn four or five polylines here. These are just polylines, they're in one after another. Let's say I need to create this line here to be smaller. I click trim, so I left click it. I click the line I want it to go to, and then I click that one. And as you can see, it gets rid of that line. Alternatively, I might want to extend, so I click this line here. I now click that line, and as you can see, it extends down. I'll go through that one more time. 
So if I click trim, I'm still on trim. I've clicked that line. So as you can see, that's in effect. I now click the top of it and it trims it back. You extend, I click the line I want it to go to. I click the, this one and as you can see, it extends down. It's useful for, base, for creating objects where I need to connect stuff to. I'm going to touch on page versus world measurement. The so page and world measurement you'll find over here under the draw coordinates. Every so often in support, we have someone calling up saying they have initialized imperial measurements. What they have usually clicked is page measurements. World measurements are the measurement type that has been set by file, option, length units. So if you're looking for the actual real measurements of changing those, you will find them here. And this is where you can set imperial or other millimeters, centimeters, meters. What this relies to, that world measurement, is referencing that. So that is 2,000 millimeters between those things via the scale. If I use tape measure and change to page measurements, you'll see a difference. It's 66.7, because this is based on the page, the actual size of the page, as it relates to the size of the paper size, in my case, A4. I'm now going to come to a slight difference in Cab Master. I'm going to come to Design Annotate. So this is a slight difference from it because I'm actually going to go out of the Annotate tab. I'm going to go to Home. I'm going to click on CM Design. I'm going to bring up the Cabinet Picker. I'm going to go to Annotation. There is a number of things in annotation you might be interested, but I'm only here for one thing, and that is the drawing symbol. The drawing symbol, and if I double click on the drawing symbol, is a symbol that allows me to either point north, south, east, west, southeast, or have it as a template and have a reference. It can be used as a reference point, as you can see by these symbols up here. You can change whether they face left or right. So that covers all the plan section of the webinar, and it hopefully gives you all the information you need to use and explore the Annotate tab. If you have any questions, please type them in now. Please only ask questions related to this topic. If you don't get to your question but do need, your an do need an answer, you can contact technical support. I'll just finish up with we will be covering elevations in the next week's topic, and today's video will be going to our YouTube channel hopefully sometime before next Friday. So saving labels. So saving labels, I thought I did cover this before. You can, under the annotate tab, I'm going to go back to CM cabinets before I do anything. The so labels, you can save a label in here. You can save as. So you can write a label in. So you could write in some text, say kitchen. With all the settings that it has, because I've lost all of those. And I can then right click on here, save as, and I can call it something in here under label as a data form. I could call it kitchen. Save. So even though I've got the word kitchen there, I could delete that so that there's no kitchen 
in my label. But if I click in here, load kitchen, right click on the kitchen format label, you'll see kitchen will come up. And what that means is when I go to place something, I'm going to go back to I come to here, notice how it immediately places the word kitchen. And I can set up any type of save in there or name or label. If there are no other questions, we will finish there. I thank you for joining us. As I said, next week's session will be on elevations. Um, today's video will be going to our YouTube channel, hopefully sometime before next Friday. We thank you for attending and happy annotating. <laughs>